What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're going to be looking at multiplication using column method in an expanded form. This is the first stage of looking at column method for multiplication. So let's waste no time, let's jump into it. Well, we're going to remember that putting our column titles will help us avoid mistakes. So let's do that first of all. We can see our first example here it says 2,527 times 4. So I have ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands in this case. Now when I put my number in, I can see I have 2,527 multiplied by 4. So my 4 is only a 1, so it will come in my ones column. Now I'm ready to start, and I need to understand where I'm going to start. Well, just like addition and subtraction, I'm going to start in my smallest value. And in this case, I have ones. So I'm going to multiply my ones down here, multiplied by my ones up here. So my first question is actually four multiplied by seven. And four times seven is 28. Two tens, eight ones, making sure I'm putting them in the right columns. Now, what's my second question I need to answer? Well, what we need to understand is that we're slowly breaking this question apart. I've done 4 times 7, so now I need to do 4 times 20. Because remember, this 2, even though it looks like a 2, is in the tens column, so it holds the value of a 20. So my next row, the question is 4 times 20. Now, here's a little trick for you. 4 times 20 might be quite hard to understand. So what I can do is I can make this question 10 times smaller by just getting rid of my 0 for a moment and doing 4 times 2. And 4 times 2 is 8, and now I can make the answer 10 times bigger, which it needs to be, by putting back my 0. Or in other words, I can see I have one 0 here, or one placeholder, so I'm going to add my placeholder to my question, and then just do 4 times 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. So my answer to 40 times 20 is 80. Now what's my next question? Well, I've done 4 times 7, I've done 4 times 20, I now need to do 4 times 500. Because remember, this 5 is actually in the hundreds column, so it's 500. So my next row is 4 times 500. Now let's use the same logic I had before. I can see I have two zeros here, so I'm going to get rid of them, and I'm going to put them in my answer row, ready for my answer. Now I can just do 4 times 5, and 4 times 5 is 20. Making sure I'm putting my numbers into the correct columns. So the actual answer to 4 times 500 is 2000. Now I'm almost finished, but I've got one more. I need to do 4 times 2000. So my question is 4 times 2000. Well, same logic. I can see I have 1, 2, 3 zeros that I'm going to have to put over here. 1, 2, 3. And now I can just do 4 times 2 and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so now I've done the individual parts of my question, I now need to think about adding this all back together. Because so far, all I've done is answered the sections one by one. So I now have my four individual answers, but to get my total, I'm going to add it back together. So I'm going to add 28 to 80 to 2000 to 8000. I'm using this space over here because I've run out of space down here. What I could do is just put an equals line underneath and then solve it like that. But I've run out of space, so I'm going to bring it over here. Ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. In my ones column, I have an eight. My tens, I have a ten. So carry the one, put my zero in the tens column. In my hundreds, I now have a one. And in my thousands, I have two plus eight, which is ten. So my answer so 2,527 times 4 is 10,108. And what we did is we partitioned my question first, we broke it down into its individual questions, and then we put it back together at the end. Whoa, hold it there a second, guys. Do me a favor, press that subscribe button. Hopefully you're getting something out of this video. Give me something back. Thank you. Let's do one more. Let's do 4,521 times 5. So I've got 4,521 multiplied by 5. So 1s, 10s, 100s and 1,000s. Now I'm ready to begin. My first question is 5 times 1. 
and 5 times 1 is simply 5. My next question is 5 times 20, because remember that 2 is actually a 20. It's in the tens column. Now 20 has a 0, so I can get rid of it, put my 0 inside my answer row ready, and now I can just do 5 times 2, which is 10. So the answer to 5 times 20 is 100. Now my next part of the question is 5 times 500, and here I can now see I've got two placeholders, so I'll put my placeholders in place. 5 times 5 is 25. And my last question is 5 times 4,000. Now I can see I have 1, 2, 3 placeholders, and now I can just do 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20. And now I've been clever enough to leave me some space, so now I can just simply add it up in these columns. So in my 1s I have a 5, in my 10s I have 0, in my 100s I've got this 1, 5 and then 0, so I have 6. In my 1000s I have 2, 10,000s now I have another 2. So my answer to 4,521 times 5 is 22,605. Okay, let's look at what to remember. Always use column titles. This will help you avoid mistakes, especially when you get to the adding up part at the end. Start by multiplying the smallest values first, and then slowly work your way up the bigger number on the top. And finally, don't forget to add up your question at the end. Some people do the partitioning part and then forget to add it up. Okay, your turn. Here are two questions for you. Take your time, find a piece of paper, and work on these two questions. Put your answers in the comments section. I'm going to make sure I mark every single one. And there you have it. That is how to multiply four digit by a one digit number using the column method in an expanded form. In our next video, we're going to look at multiplying a four digit by a two digit number and see how that gets a bit more complicated. So if you want to check that out, make sure you subscribe. But for now, guys, I'll see you in another video. Peace out.